Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at TruthBrigade.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call at 402-237-2525. That's 402-AFR-2525. Our special guest tonight, Esoteric Kitten. She has made, I think, the best series of videos, the Hollywood MK Ultra Deception. I think there's like 30 parts of it now and still keeps on growing. You can find on YouTube at youtube.com slash esoteric kitten or go to her blog spot big screen deception dot blog spot dot com and other videos and information there thank you so much for joining us tonight EK how you doing all right how are you tonight Oh, good. So good to have you here. I just, I mean, seriously, I was just talking with the producer and how your uh, videos are just, I think, the most well put together expose and, you know, how you're able to just find these things <laughs> and point them out. I, I was just trying to say they're so, imparent, uh, or so important, especially for parents who want to just throw their children in front of the boob tube, uh, you know, and buy the latest fashions or keep up with Hannah Montana or, you know, this and that. It just, you know, because it's all, it's right out there in front of us. But, you know, we don't normally kind of think that way. Our mind isn't trained, I guess, to kind of notice all of these signs and symbols and everyone shoving it in our face. So I just thank you so much for all of your work, literally years, putting all this information together for us. Oh, absolutely. No problem. Um, you know, it was something that just sort of gradually made itself obvious to me. And I'm, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, now that I can actually recognize this stuff, what do I do with it? You know, um, because there was a, there was a time when it was just sort of popping out at me and I was like, no, this, this can't be, this, this just can't be, you know, I, I've got to be wrong about this. And so I would try to, you know, blow it off and ignore it and sit in front of the TV. TV and something else would pop up and I'd be just, you know, ready to fall off of my sofa and just like, does anyone see this? Am I the only one that sees this? And, you know, it just got to the point where I was like, okay, you know what? I can't ignore this anymore. It's too obvious. I have to tell someone. I, you know, I have to tell as many people that will be willing to listen to me. And so that's just what I started doing. Mm-hmm. Well, if you can, I mean, obviously you can't tell us too much about um, your background, but I mentioned you, d you do have a training, um, or you were trained as a spy in um, corporate arena. Um, so that probably kind of helped with your research, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was trained uh, as a business intelligence agent, and essentially what I would do is I was I would be hired by you know one corporation to spy on another, um, and the research needed to be so in depth to the point where you know if I could find out what the you know what my target's favorite color socks were, then I would find that out just in small talk and you know record the wow. information and yeah. And wow. get it back why to the person who hired me. <laughs> why would you have to find out what color socks they wear? Well, I mean that's an exaggeration, but I mean you know any uh, tidbit yeah. of information that I could possibly find out about them, I would, and then I would record it and I would send it, you know, send it back to whoever I was hired, uh, who, excuse me, whoever had hired me. And it's very easy now with the internet, you know, with places like LinkedIn, and you know, people just you know, put their whole resume online, their whole background history, because it, it, it helps them advance in their career. Uh, what it also does is it makes the information available to people like me who were hired to go in and examine everything about you in order to find a way to create a need so that you would need whatever it was that um, I was hired you know, so if I was hired ah, to, so you that's kind of you're part of putting together the dossier, so to speak. Basically, yes. How do we get um, this person? What are their needs? How do we control them or get them to do what we want them to do? Exactly. How do I how do I make a profile of this company of this person? 
to create a need because a lot of times there was no need at all. Um, it would be something that, that I was very good at doing where I'd go in and I'd, you know, ask the right questions after knowing um, what it is that I knew from researching and then go in and just create this, uh, create paranoia, create um, a desire for them to need whatever it was that I had, even if I knew that they didn't need it, even if I knew that they had something similar to what it was that I was trying to achieve from them, but I was very successful at it. Um, and a lot of the organizations and corporations that I worked for, uh, as time went on, I, you know, I started to think, you know what, this doesn't really seem right, or this doesn't really sound right, or this isn't really helping anybody. And as a matter of fact, you know, some of the organizations that I was hired uh, you know, that hired me, I'm like, well, wait a minute, these guys are collecting data on people. Excuse me, the, the everyday, you know, average Joe type of individual, they're collecting data. They, can, they call it consumer data now because we're not people anymore. We're yeah. consumers. Mm-hmm. And so things like that just started to ring bells. And I'm like, you know, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right. And I'd go in, um, you know, during the training processes and I'd say, okay, well, let me ask you a couple of questions. How are you going about doing this? How are you making money? How is it that this is able to be done? You know, and sometimes I was sent out of the meeting for asking too many questions. Sometimes I was, you know, given a look across the table from, you know, a supervisor, like, you know, you're asking too many questions, be quiet, or, you know, they would speak over me and just kind of shut me up, and I'm like, you know, I'm not comfortable with with that, so... um I just started digging into the people that were hiring me and finding out that they were involved in um, basically the expansion of um, the corporate world, and a lot of them were affiliated with government programs, and they just weren't there to help the people. They were there to expand government, and it just kind of spiraled, you know, and just went on and on and on from there. So that's kind of how I evolved into... um, into this. So, ah, so you knew what to look for. It was kind of a natural fit for you. It was because it's like, you know, and even their logos, and this was before I could read any of the, sim- the symbolism, um, you know, I'm just like, some of these logos, some of the stuff's backwards, some of it's spelled different, some of it's bolded, why would they bold it? Just asking little, little pesky questions that seem to be irritating, but I'm like, you know, this stuff, you don't, you don't become a, a multi-million dollar corporation by accidentally making your logo look this way. So where is it yeah. coming from? Who's putting this together? You know? And so um, it got to a point where I just got really frustrated and I, and I, and I walked out and um, I just started um, doing more research and looking into things and finding, you know, finding more disturbing things as I went along. And one of the really interesting things that I found was the connection between the military industrial complex and the mm. Disney theme parks. You know, mm. I, you know, I'm just like, wait a minute, why is there, why is the military industrial complex um, involved in these these Disney theme parks, these you know amusement parks for kids? Mm-hmm. What the hell are they doing here? You know. And recognizing some of the corporate logos and the corporate affiliations, I'm like, this doesn't seem right. This isn't. This isn't right. What's really going on? And the more I started digging, it was just, <laughs> it just, it just was like, I, somebody has to know. And you know, I get information from here. I get information from there. And when you put it all together and you combine it with a lot of the um, escaped MK Ultra slaves who would have fragmented memory pieces uh, from Disney theme parks and underground caverns and Disney theme parks and laboratories and this door and that door and all these different Jeez. things going on un- underneath the actual theme park. It's just like, okay, this opens up a whole different can of worms altogether. Mm, my goodness. Well, let's kind of talk about that. There was a few questions on the chat I, I missed already, but your videos, I mean, you really point out, and, and you're on Facebook as well. I think it's Esoteric Kitten, right? It's, um, yeah. Esoteric, it's Esoteric Kitten, Kitten Deception. Deception. Yeah, well, they put that link in the chat. But um, for those streaming, just go to facebook.com and esoteric kitten deception. 
And yeah. the information you put through here on an average day, it just blows my mind. So sometimes late at night I'll go and I'll look at all the pictures. What did she find today? And, you know, it's funny for me because, honestly, I don't even... When I left Hollywood, I left, and I never looked back. I don't even know who all of the popular, you know, stars are. I'm, I'm starting to learn, and, of course, looking at your pictures and your blogs and your movies, I'm learning myself. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just so fascinating. It's, I would really like to encourage everyone to go check it out. I mean, some of the things that you've pointed out, I mean, most recently you put up some photos of stars that have uh, tattoos on their fingers, Oh yeah, um, there's three of them. There's three in particular that I found that had the same exact ones: um, Rihanna, Lindsay Lohan, and uh, what the heck's that girl's name? Uh, Lily Allen. And they mm. each have a tattoo on their index finger that says "shush" on it. Um, it's spelled S H H H on it, and I found that to be very interesting because because of the code of silence that goes on with some of these um, MK Ultra slaves or assets or however you want to describe them as, um, and basically, you know, they're branded. They'll be branded with different tattoos, um, and you know, when you know what you're looking at, it doesn't just scream tattoo anymore. It means something completely different. Um, Megan Fox has an interesting tattoo on her rib cage, um, and hers says, "We will all laugh at the butterflies." And anyone familiar with the MK theme will be familiar with Project Monarch because it's essentially the same program. A lot of these people come out of the Monarch program, and um, and so the Monarch um, program is affiliated with the Monarch butterflies. And so you'll see the connection between monarchs and butterflies and, and, and their, their tattoos that they're getting. Some of them even have their own programming scripts tattooed on their body. Um, wow. So, yeah, so it's really, she's also actually, Megan Fox is an interesting one because she also has a programming script on her, on her, I think it's on her other rib cage. Excuse me, the programming script is on her rib cage. The um, laughing at gilded butterflies is on her uh, shoulder, on the back of her shoulder. And she also has the Marilyn Man Monroe tattoo on her forearm. Now, a lot of the, the younger, um, the younger program girls are modeled after Marilyn Monroe, who was said to be the first uh, publicly introduced uh, monarch slave to be used and killed out into the out in the public uh, uh, eye, and so you'll see a lot of their likenesses, um, a lot of their photo shoots, even their tattoos, their clothing will be Marilyn Monroe because it's part of their enforcement, it's part of their programming. Now, what mm. it does is it does a few things. It um, it reinforces their their mind control programming, and it it does a repeat pattern to say, "Oh, Marilyn Monroe." And what that does is, after a certain amount of repetition, we're going to become used to it. We're going to become desensitized to it. Yes. Excuse me. And you might even go out and buy a Marilyn Monroe poster. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stick it on your wall and not not realize who you just hung on your wall. You know. So, um. So, yeah, Megan Fox is a very interesting one. She also, if people are interested in looking into her, she also came out um, with a few remarks about her having some sort of mental illness that she just can't quite put her finger on. And she thinks mm. she may be schizophrenic, but she's not completely sure. She just knows mm. that there's something wrong with her. And she also um, spoke up and made some interesting remarks about the film High School Musical, and I don't know if you caught that link. I threw it up on the Facebook, but um, she basically is saying, you know, that film is about pedophilia. The coach in that movie is molesting all of those boys, and the film is about those boys trying to cope with it, and the girlfriends wow. in the movies are basically just a beard or a camouflage to conceal the fact that this is taking place. And it's funny because after she made that remark, she kind of underwent a... Um, you know, public slander, which usually is what happens when you tell the truth, you know. Yeah, and, or when and, you start to break the programming. 
Exactly. You start to break the programming, you get the public assassination, you know, character assassination, excuse me, or you get thrown in rehab for reprogramming or, I mean, the list of people who, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just said, or prison. (laughs) Yeah, or or prison, um, as long as you're not in the public eye and you're able to sort of, you know, be somewhere where you can't defend yourself and the media just hacks away at, you know, at your persona, then that's really what they're 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 all about if you start breaking programming and telling the truth. So it's pretty amazing to actually when you know what you're looking at, it is so obvious, it's almost insulting to the intelligence. Mm, yeah, no kidding. What are um some of the ways that they y- well, okay, let, let's get back to, you mentioned um, that these stars have a lot of thing, things in common. Are, who ultimately is responsible for the training, the handling, et cetera? Is there one group of people or are there several? There's all types of different little pockets, um, and it's hard to pinpoint just one because a lot of them are little subdivisions of, you know, socially functioning places, you know, like like churches, for instance, mm-hmm. um, you know, Scientology is an, Scientology's an interesting one um, because they they do a lot of mind control programming. If you do some digging into them, you'll, you'll get some interesting uh, information mm-hmm. coming out of those guys. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to, to, to pinpoint which one it is unless you start really looking at specific stars and then you'll start to see a pattern with a few of them. Um, a good a good couple that I actually came across was Rose McGowan and Joaquin Phoenix. And those two came out of a cult called uh, the Children of God. And interesting because they were um it was a um it was a it was a cult, mind control cult, and there was a lot of pedophilia going on in that cult. And you know, it was raided and it was broken apart. But those two particular celebrities came out of that one specific uh cult and I Okay, uh EK, I'm sorry, hold that right there. We are gonna be right back after this short break. Stay tuned, Esoteric Kitten here on Truth Brigade Radio. Back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight, Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com with our special guest tonight, Esoteric Kitten, and uh, she made the uh, Hollywood and MK Ultra Deception, which you can find on YouTube, or her website is BigScreenDeception.blogspot.com. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call at 402 237 Two five two five, and if you'd like to join us in the chat, that's over at truthbrigade.com. Ek, let me ask you this before we go further. I kind of forgot to bring this up last segment, but esoteric kitten. Where does that name come from, and what does it mean? Oh gosh, uh, you know what? <laughs> it's a con- <laughs> It's a, I guess it's a combination of my evolution um, because, you know, like all the esoteric knowledge that I had gained over, I think, the, the two years before I decided to come out um, and start sharing it, just I needed to put that in there. But in my own ignorance of not fully comprehending, um, you know, how the word kitten was used in these circles, I say that in there too, so I guess it's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, having knowledge and not having enough, I guess. Um, so that's sort of what it was. It was an accident. You didn't purposely <laughs> choose that because you knew that, um, well, the, the meaning of the kitten? I didn't, I didn't have a full comprehension of it, no. I had, um, I had come across it in some of the reading material, but you know, when you, as you're going along and you're, trying to absorb all of this information, um, some things, sometimes they just sort of need to be pounded into your head a few times, and uh, as it came, as it, you know, as as things went along, and I was doing this series, I said, oh, man, you know, now I have to figure out how I'm going to have to explain this kitten portion, because I'm going to have to explain this every single time, every single upload, almost every single day, and I, and I still, to this day, have to explain it, and you know, for a while I was just, you know, frustrated and embarrassed about it. And I was like, you know what, I'm not going to be frustrated about it because I, it really was done 
out of ignorance, and that just goes but to show not. that. That's what it was really initially, crazy. you know, right and it there. goes to show also what? that I really, you know, I'm I'm human, and I really didn't, you know, when I first started doing this, I didn't have a full comprehension of what I was getting myself into. So, mm -hmm. so right. there it is. I thought you chose it on purpose, just you know, kind of in in honor of <laughs> the kittens, or just to kind of bring more attention to it. But to find out that it happened accidentally is actually I quite magical, isn't it? I and guess so. I mean, inside you just weren't consciously aware, right? You know, I mean, I, I guess you know when you look at it, when you look at it as in its entirety, you say, well, you know what? I guess it doesn't belong there because people have said, well, you know, maybe you should change it. And I said, you know what? No, I this is the name that I chose, and I'll have to stick with the branding of it. And you know, if people don't like it, I'll explain it to them. And if they don't like that, then that's just going to be tough. So. Yeah, you no, know. I wasn't asking because I didn't like it. I thought it would be a good segue into, <laughs> um, oh. you know, the, the people, you know, we were you were just kind of talking about some of the stars, and I apologize. I'm not so up to date on all these new names and everything, um, but, of course, the corporations or cults and such behind it. I've kind of noticed a lot of these uh stars kittens uh <laughs> toys slaves uh come out of disney is that just a coincidence well, you know what? First, first off, you don't you don't even have to apologize at all. I mean, you know, these things, the lingo. I'm still sort of catching up with it, and I get surprises every day. You know, every day something else comes up. But the other thing is, a lot of them do come out of Disney. Um, Miley Cyrus, you know, this kid is a mess. I mean, you know, from her TV Miley show. Miley Cyrus is that that Hannah Montana chick? Yes, you oh know. Oh my and, God! Like, yes. what about that? Putting your split personality right there out in the open. How, how old is this girl? Uh, you know what? I think she's on her way to eighteen now. Um, but wow, she, she, they've already they they've had her half naked for a couple of years now, running around. I mean, I've got some pretty you know revealing photos of the poor girl and she's not even of age yet so that just so goes to show what they're So for those of you like me, doing. Miley Cyrus, if you have young daughters and you don't know what they're talking about, Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana is the same person. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. It is the same person, and this is the thing: is if you, and a lot of parents out there, if they're listening, and you happen to have Hannah Montana memorabilia for your kids, go take a good look at that stuff. Okay, you will see she's split directly down the center, so you'll see it. It'll say Hannah Montana, and one side will have brown hair, the other side will have blonde hair, and it'll be split with a with a I don't know, a sort of like an opening doorway of light going right down the center and at the bottom it will say best of both worlds and I don't know how, how, how much more obvious multiple personality disorder coming out of Disney can be I mean it's right on the cover of the folders the backpacks the shirts it's got butterflies all over it you know her website has butterflies all over it her songs she's even singing about butterflies flying away and you know so I mean if, if anyone is, is, is one of the most obvious Disney programmed celebrities it has to be this young girl. And, I mean, it's difficult to see if you don't know what you're looking for, but once you start to understand the monarch programming and the, 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 the multiple personality disorder that comes with being involved in this stuff and the Disney programming that, that's connected with all of this stuff, it will become so obvious. Not only will you be angry at the fact that you've been deceived by it, but you'll be even more frustrated at the fact that you let your children be deceived by it and the fact that you purchased it and you have it in your home in the first place, you know? So it's like the more you understand about what Hollywood is and, and their goals and the, the, the type of individuals that they're putting in on TV and in front of your kids to basically entrain your kids, the, the better armed you'll be and the better armed your children will be because they'll know what they're looking at. And as a matter of fact, they'll sit there and point it out to you and say, Mom, check this out. Mom, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Pause it. Look at this. And it'll get to a point where you, you, you're just not even going to need the television anymore, which is what I'm really trying to get people to, to do is throw their TVs out if I can. Well, right now, children are trying to emulate these people, and they don't really know what's going on. And then, of course, they judge themselves because, well, I'm not this Photoshop beauty that has all these different looks or talent. I'm not on TV or whatever, you know, the kids who uh, 
feel self-conscious. I mean, it's like a double-edged sword. They don't even know what they're idolizing and worshiping. And, you know, the sad fact of the matter is, is that the, the objects, the subjects, the slaves themselves, they don't even know. Some of them go their whole lives without even knowing. Yeah. Some of them go their their entire lives you without know, even realizing like, oh, it. Oh, I have some mental disease, you know. We'll just call it, uh, what, as you mentioned before, schizophrenia or this or that. And then occasionally you have a star coming out saying, oh, I've suffered from this mental illness that doesn't exist all my life. When really it's like called, hello, abuse, torture, rape. <laughs> right, absolutely. I mean, you know, these people are owned and purchased assets, and they're sold. A lot of them are sold into this program, you know, by you know families that are, that are that are poor families, and some of them are raised in multi generational incestuous families. So, you know, mom mom has been afflicted by incest. Dad has two grandparents. You know, the great grandparents. So it's normal for these families to, you know, sexually be involved with their other family members, you know what I mean? So it's it's not a um a taboo thing for some of these people. So what happens is is because they're so used to and because they're so traumatized as kids, because listen, when you take a child and you sexually assault a small child, that that trust, the the initial innocence, the initial trust that comes along with being a child is gone. Okay, and in order to cope with that, you just disassociate. You go somewhere else mentally, and what happens is, is when you're a child and you already have the skill of being able to disassociate, that is like prime for these kinds of programmers. Mm -hmm. And so you can sell your child into that program if if your child already has that ability or disability, depending on how you look at it. And that child will be raised on a monarch regimen of, you know, if it's daily programming, weekly programming, brought to certain locations, you know. I mean, the stuff that these kids go through, um, the trauma that is induced with these kids, you know, and then it's just, it's, like, I don't even want to speak on, on some of the things that, that I've come to understand that these kids undergo. But a lot of it goes, you know, a lot of it is, is child rape. Um, a lot of the pedophilia um, cults and groups are operating in front of you and you just don't realize it. You just don't understand it. You don't know how to read it when you see a, when you see in an old Navy commercial with three little kids holding a sign that says free gifts, but the arrows, instead of pointing to shirts, the arrows are pointing to each of the children that are holding the poster, you know, and it's flashed in front of your face for one second. If you can comprehend it, you can comprehend it. Great, wonderful. If it goes over your head, it goes completely over your head and you miss the message you know um but mm -hmm. back to my back to my previous rant is that um so what will happen is, is when these kids disassociate it, it becomes a skill and so when they disassociate these programmers you know they know at what point this child is disassociated at and they can install whatever type of programming they want to very much like a laptop computer or or, or any kind of computer for that matter they're using human beings as laptops to get them to execute on command, whatever it is that they want them to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so this this happens, you know, from from childhood on. And again, when you're raised in this sort of thing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. As you grow older and you begin to have a little bit more intelligence and wits about you, you know, there are some times when you may slip. If you slip, you end up in rehab, you end up dead, you end up being triggered to, to jump off a roof. Or, I mean, there's so many different ways to, to rid themselves of a liability because, again, these people are assets. They are owned. They are purchased slaves. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, last week we were talking about the music industry, and of course we're kind of stretching it out this week to music and Hollywood, but they certainly have a, a dangerous profession. I mean, so many of them have very short lives and careers, and um, more often than not, um, very questionable uh, deaths or disappearances. Absolutely. I mean, the the last upload that I did um, 
just covered some of the uh, some of the deaths from 2008, 2009, and 2010, which was sort of ignited by Randy Quaid's coming out and him speaking on the these assassins and these Hollywood whackers that he feels are responsible for coming out and offing some of these celebrities, and he's absolutely correct. And not only is he correct, uh, he mentioned, and I don't know if you recall the last time we did the radio show, because you've had so many different things to do in between that time, but I mentioned that there were a couple that I was really concerned about, and that was Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. And when he comes, when he came along, and he's like, you know, Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan, you know, they're being played for their money. I just, I almost like fell off my computer chair. I was like, I can't believe after all this time, you know, he at least, at least someone else is coming out and they're talking about these two in particular girls because to me it is so obvious that they don't have, they don't have much time left as far as, as far as I can see. Uh, unless there is some intervention or some kind of, you know, uh, uproar with the people just, I don't know, people going on to forums or something and, and just posting kind of, you know, information or whatever they can possibly do to, to get these two particular girls because as far as I'm concerned, they're next on the chopping block. It's, it's very obvious to me. Um, mm-hmm. And for him to make mention of that, it really kind of like, it just blew my mind because I was kind of happy that they were at least, at least something like this prolong um, anything happening with these girls um, I'm hoping anyway but um, but But yeah I mean she's kind of been through the ringer been through the mill of course we're supposed to hate her and judge her and call her mentally ill and a bad mother and all of these other things but what's really going on with her you know, that girl's programming, from what I can see, is so intense that I don't even know how she's able to function, to be completely honest with you. Um, she came out of Disney early. Uh, even her first video, I actually went back and looked at her Hit, Hit Me Baby One More Time video, and it's got a lot of uh, excuse me, occult embeds in that video. Um, wow, she, E.K., I'm sorry, it's that time. Uh, so hold that right there. We'll finish this up when we return on the other side esoteric kitten here on Truth Brigade Radio. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Truth Brigade tonight with Esoteric Kitten talking about Hollywood and MK Ultra. And uh, EK, if you could just please continue. You were telling us about um, Brittany. Yeah, um, I forget where I was. I go on these rants and I lose my my spot. Uh, but um, well, that's but okay. yeah, let you me know. just ask you this then. What I mean, okay. you know, they told us about this big breakdown and shaved her head and yeah. rumors that she wrote six 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 on her forehead. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I guess there's videos of her shaving her head. Was it staged? Was it just something where she was breaking the pro? You know. Actually, I'm just, I don't know why I feel compelled to say this, but in my own personal experience, um, there were times where, you know, and maybe she was programmed to do it, maybe somebody made her do it, who knows, you know, I don't know if we'll ever know, but I know that when you're in that situation, you will do whatever you can to stop being looked at like a kitten, a goddess, a piece of meat, a sex slave. And shaving my head actually crossed my mind many times. Um, In fact, gosh, I looked like Liza Minnelli once. It was a really big mistake. It was horrible. But I would do things go from, you know, blonde to, to chestnut or then to bright red or just, you know... It was just something I wanted, and even purposefully gained weight, because I didn't want people looking at me like that. So I just wondered, you know, putting myself in her situation, maybe that had something to do with it as she was breaking the programming. Well, screw this. If I'm, you know, fat and ugly, you can't look at me like this or treat me like this anymore. Could there be some truth in that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, again, because she came out of Disney, that makes her a candidate for the child pedophilia rings, um, which I personally think that she was used in um, before, obviously before she became um, legally of age. And I do believe that she was used um, for sex slavery as a child. Uh, Courtney Love, earlier this year, I believe it was either January or February of this year, came out 
and she uh, she made the remark that Britney Spears' father uh, has been raping her since she was a child. And again, you know, when you're talking about these monarch kids, the father will be the primary handler, okay? Uh, which makes perfect sense to me. So when I heard it, it confirmed what I suspected. It didn't surprise me, but it definitely confirmed it. Um, and her father uh, is her handler. Um, and so he would be the person who would, um, you know, be sending her from point A to point B. He would be the person that manages her multiple personalities. He would be her main controller, uh, which he still is to this day because of the legal uh, conservatorship that he put on her mm -hmm. and her money, okay? So he is still actively involved in doing this. Uh, Courtney Love also stated that she is uh, instructed to sing sexual songs while she is still undergoing this form of sexual abuse. Um, and Love. she slave for you. Um, she's running around saying, I'm a slave for you, okay? And when you start talking about these people, you know that they're considered slaves. There's a lot of different words to describe them, but slaves is one of them. Um, and so... Uh, that's that's one thing. Uh, Britney Spears, she's, she, this girl has had bruises on her from head to toe since I've been really looking closely at her. She's got bruises on her thighs, bruises on her wrists, burns on her wrists, and burns on her arms, bruises. I mean, just covered from head to toe. Um, I'm not quite sure about the Kevin Federline pairing, uh, but I do know that they are usually... Um, if they're going to breed, they'll be paired up with someone genetically um, fitted for them. Uh, and they also, these two also have the two dice tattoos together. So he's got the two dice on his, I believe it's wrist, and she also has the two dice on her wrist. Um, and the shaving of the head, yes. When she ran around shaving her head, right after she uh, shaved her head, she was quoted as saying, you know, I'm tired of everybody touching me. I just want everyone to stop touching me. Mm -hmm. And so that, <laughs> right. So she did so, say that. Could have had so Okay, I didn't know that because I, I don't read the headlines and no news, no TV, no radio um, in my little world. So, wow. Okay. Yeah, so that definitely confirms what you were talking about as far as, you know, you're looking at me this way, you're just sort of really trying to escape that type of that type of lifestyle. So yes, that, that took place. Um, her boys were taken from her, both of them. Um and if you if you go back and look at some of the headlines in the tabloids because you know, I don't watch T V either. But if I go to the supermarket and I just have a glance over at a tabloid, you know, it will say, Oh, Katie Holmes, Stepford wife and I'm and I'll just stand there with my groceries like staring at this magazine like I cannot believe that that they have the balls to put this on the front of this magazine and no one knows what they're looking at. But I'm sitting here and if I try to tell the the cashier what's really going on, they're gonna have me dragged out of here in a white jacket. You know what I mean? So it's like they they'll they'll put in the magazines, especially the magazines, um, they put Britney Spears, you know, her tra uh, traumatized toddlers they put on the front of this um, tabloid. And again, we're talking about trauma-based mind control. And I know I keep throwing out these different terms that may not uh, make full sense to the people who are listening unless they're familiar with the MK Ultra programming or my videos, um, but... The trauma-based mind control is what keeps them under control. It is what splits them. It is what um, enforces their slavery. It's what keeps them bound. Um, and so they'll and use it's only certain... when they step out of that is when we start hearing, hearing about them being demonized in the news. Well, some of it, some of the trauma, it's... It is part of their programming anyway. So it's really hard to say, but when you really start seeing them being just run into the mud, like Charlie Sheen, you know, he just, you know... Michael just, Jackson. Right. Like, these are all the things that they're doing. These are all the things they're doing. Look what they're doing. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. It usually means that they're slipping out. That's what it usually it's not is. not even really them what they're portraying either. But, uh, hey, they own the media and the entertainers. So I guess we just take it in stride. Um, it's that time, though, EK. We will be right back after this short break. Truth Brigade Radio. Right. Welcome back. Top of the second hour here tonight. 
tonight with Esoteric Kitten here on Truth Brigade Radio. And EK, we have a real short segment here. So uh, let, let's get, um, let me ask you this. Do you think that um, Britney's breakdown, or, you know, was it orchestrated? I don't think it was orchestrated. I actually think it was a surprise to the powers that be. Um, Some of it, as far as her being taken out of the house, tossed into the ambulance, uh, that was actually depicted in her video um, of any time, the suicide attempt in her. I think she was thrown into an ambulance as well in that video. Um, Some of their future is depicted in their media works and their artworks. Um, so you should, if you really want to... What about videotaping while um, shaving her hair? Well, you know what? Again, I mean, they have the paparazzi following them everywhere anyway, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to figure out which is which. Um, the, it's funny because when she when she went to shave her hair, she was wearing the uh, the Star of David charm. Um, which I found to be interesting. So that definitely could have been some form of instruction or programming, hey, go out and shave your head um, or go out and get a tattoo because she did go out and get a tattoo the same evening. And the tattoo that she got was the kiss mark on her wrist, which is also um, a depiction of the kiss of death, which is when you get a scorpion bite, um, it will swell up and look like two lips. Um, and so that's a double, that's a sort of like a double uh, dual uh, depiction of a tattoo that she got. So again, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to say um, which is which. She was videotaped. She wasn't videotaped from inside the saloon. She was videotaped from outside the saloon. So um, that's, I guess that's another thing where it's, I guess it's questionable. Um, so I guess, you know, if she breaks programming and comes forward one day, we'll be able to get the details. But until then, we just can kind of sit and speculate and, and watch in horror as all this stuff goes down. Yeah, and then the media is going to show us <laughs> what they want us to think or try to sway public opinion. I mean, like, poor Michael Jackson. Yeah. I, I just can't... Uh... <laughs> You know, it really, it kind of upsets me. I remember how many people were like, cheer. I mean, of course, a lot of people mourned his death, but then there was a whole segment, people cheering, celebrating, like, oh, great, the pedophile, you know, what a weirdo, tried to make himself white, and all of these horrible rumors. You know, he never said he wanted to be white. I don't think he did that. And there's even a few uh, videos with him on the street, you know, kind of insinuating the control and accidents and things. He wasn't able to speak for himself, though. They did that for him and threatened him to keep him in line. They did, and, and the thing is that people need to take into consideration when looking at these situations and these celebrities is the multiple personality disorder or the disassociative identity disorder um, mental problem that's involved because if you watch any um, interview that Michael Jackson did, he'll swear up and down that, hey, listen, I never had any plastic surgery. Dude, mm-hmm. you have no nose. You, something happened to you. You had plastic surgery, but depending on which altar is sitting there telling you, did you have plastic surgery, yes or no, it's going to depend on which altar has the belief, hey, yes, I did or no, I did not. The other thing, too, with it is that he had a, um, he had an affiliation with Peter Pan, okay, and if people are familiar with uh, the story of Pan, uh, they would know that there is a uh, pedophile connection with that story. Uh, with Pan sort of leading the children. Um, and so, it's, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't there, obviously, so I don't have concrete proof. But it's from what I see, I do believe that some of them, because of their, um, because of their multi-generational incest, you know, families, I do believe that there is, uh, some of them are programmed with Oh, I'm sorry, it's that time. We will be right back. Truth Brigade Radio. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and IrritateTheState.net. And thank you to our other affiliates picking us up. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at TruthBrigade.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call at 402-237-2525. And I see we have a couple callers on the line, 
but before we get to you, if you could, uh, E.K., um, just finish up. You were talking about uh, Peter Pan and Michael Jackson and uh, multiple personalities. Yeah, um, I, I believe that um, some of these celebrities definitely have pedophile programming in them or installed in them or however you want to describe it because they're coming out of these families that are molesting their children. Okay, so it's, it's something that is of second nature to them. Um, the other thing about Michael Jackson is that he had um, a huge connection with Disney and Disney theme parks, and you know he was he was seen with Emmanuel Lewis and Disney, and he was seen with Macaulay Culkin and Disney, and he did a lot of things for Disney. He had the um, feature showcase Captain EO um, that was shown only at the Disney parks. Um, so he had a lot of connections with Disney. Um, he also did something on stage with Britney Spears. And Britney Spears came out wearing the Tinkerbell costume. Okay, so again, there's that that um, that Disney connection. I just kind of wanted to highlight highlight those two things. Um, okay, regarding... let me ask you this. There was a question uh, in regards to Disney in the chat earlier. Let me see if I can find that quickly. Um, here it is. It says seriously. All this talk about how Disney went to hell, can't we find out maybe when this changeover happened? Because it wasn't Walt Disney really sincere and did things to the last detail with a lot of respect. And at least that's what I think I even heard on this show from Tobias. So he's trying to figure out exactly when this all took place with Disney? Yeah, when um, Disney went downhill and, and started um, controlling <laughs> their talent. Well, Disney actually, um, I believe Disney, you know, the beginning of Disney when the animation uh, first came out, it was during, I believe it was during um, one of the depressions that America was having, and so they needed something to sort of uplift the spirits of the people, uh, but simultaneously feed them propaganda. So they did a lot of it through their animation. Um, and it was always affiliated with the FBI. It was always affiliated with the military-industrial complex. It's just that gradually, as time went on, it became more obvious. Um, so if you do some digging, again, you have to you have to go and do the legwork and do the digging and do the affiliations, you know, with Disney and FBI and Disney with the military-industrial complex, and you will find that they, they're a pair. They came hand in hand. They came out of the box hand in hand like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking in the te text chat. Uh, wasn't Walt Disney a 33rd degree Mason? I mean, yes, was he kind of always? Okay. And right. he also has so the, maybe the, 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 it wasn't the, a big changeover. Maybe it's always been this way, which just wasn't out there. I mean, you know, you mentioned right. Marilyn Monroe. People weren't talking about MK Ultra back then. They were, you know, um, of course they, they weren't. weren't. They weren't. They, they, they weren't given the information. Mm -hmm. It was a very, it was a very secret, quiet thing. Um, you weren't supposed to know about mind control because back then it, it was not possible. Um, at least people could not comprehend it. Now it's, I mean, the technology that we've got thrown at us. I mean, it's, it's so obvious compared to some of the other things that that you know people are just like no 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 that's not possible we're not being sprayed and we're not this and we're not that yeah these things are happening too so it depends on which one you have a tough time wrapping your mind around because all kinds of different things are going down in plain sight um it's just a matter of being able to wrap your mind around it accept it and then turn around and do something about it Absolutely. Good point. Um, we have a few callers on the line, so let's try to get to those. Um, our first call uh, is an unavailable, um, so if that is you, welcome to the show. Happy birthday, Esoteric, and happy birthday, Christy. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Quick question. Um, I always thought uh, Paul Rubens was the one that bumped off Jim Barney. Wait, say it again? I think, uh, I always huh? thought that uh, Paul Rubens, you know, Pee Wee Herman, was the <laughs> one that uh, bumped off uh, Jim Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Um, because I, as far as I, yeah, cause, I cause think he's being is, silly. Every, every, time, every time I used to watch Pee Wee's Playhouse, I always I got the need to expose myself. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, Louie, you're being silly, right? Well, no, that's that's a serious question. As far as I know, Jim Barney passed from cancer, but then again, that's the official story. So if you really want to know, I suggest you put your man piece away and do some digging into Jim Barney's death yourself and see what you come up with. Oh, there you go. Uh, Good idea. All right. In, in, in that case, hold on. Let me, let me, there you go. I shot you. All right. There bye you bye. go. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 thanks for your call. Wait, 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 quick question. Do you, do you like fish sticks? I don't know if our, you know what our guests don't watch South Park, Louie. Okay, we have uh, no. other callers tonight. Don't no, kill the job. Yeah, well, because you, it's the third time this week. I mean, you know, ha ha, very funny. Can we move on? Oh, not until. <laughs> All righty. All right. Love you, honey. Bye. Take care. <laughs> All right. Our next call, it looks like it must be uh, overseas. It's a really long area code. So if that is you, welcome to the show. Uh, it might be me. Hi there. Hi. This is Siva. I'm a friend of um, EK. Hello. Oh, Siva. Hi. How are you? I'm good. And I'm really, really excited about hearing you, uh, hearing your voice. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you for giving me a ring. That's so awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I just had to. I just had to. And um, I, there's so many questions I, I could have asked, um, but I've chosen to, to, to talk about one thing, which is um, do you think that, um, you know, when you hear, um, like, Angelina Jolie or um, Michelle, the British girl who plays Bionic Woman, for example, we all do these um, martial arts. Like I can, I can barely arts. hear you, honey. Can you hear me? Barely. You sound kind of yeah. muffly. Yeah, a little bit muffled. I heard Angelina Jolie and martial arts. Well, what, what I'm thinking is, do you think that these celebrities, these stars, might be used as spies? Are are, are they spies in real life? Do you think they've been used as that? You know, but you know, big celebrities. They stay, they film stars, or but uh, you know, in secret, they also spy traveling around the world. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Absolutely, especially you know, it's funny that you mentioned Angelina Jolie because she's uh, a member of the um, the Council of Foreign Relations. Okay, exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, so and you hit the nail on the head with that mean. one. Um, and she's been yeah. you know bouncing around the globe, collecting kids and tattooing their their locations where she got them on her body. So absolutely, one hundred percent. I definitely think that they are involved um, on high levels that we don't see. Um, not only that, but they're used, a lot of them, again, they're slaves, so they are used in, in prostitution. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if you send someone like Angelina Jolie over to Dubai, you're going to bring in a, a pretty penny. Um, a lot of these celebrities actually go overseas. They've entertained in Dubai, like Britney Spears, for instance. Uh, Beyonce has also entertained uh, some of the Saudi princes. So when you start doing digging like that, absolutely. The other thing that comes in handy with them is when they are sent um, to high-profile clients, they have multiple personality disorder, and with that comes the bonus of an incredible memory stored with whichever altar that they use. And so when they go back to their handler, that information, again, is extracted just like a computer. When I, when I say that these people are being used like laptops, they are being used like laptops. I mean, so absolutely 100%, I, I, I think that you are correct with that question, Sila. Yeah, yeah, very, and, very good uh, connection. And as I, I mentioned I again, so. never mind her uh, spy movies, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Was, she was a prostitute and a spy in um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and she's constantly doing CIA movies. Like, if you look at all of the celebrities that are coming out with these CIA movies, it's incredible. I just saw the movie Red, and um, the, the woman, the older woman that's in that movie, she... she Keep making this remark. Well, you can't flip the switch and change someone, change into someone else. They must have said it about three or four times, and I'm sitting there like biting my nails, I'm like I know what you're talking about. I know what you mean, but nobody else knows what they mean. So you're absolutely correct with that. 
Mm-hmm. You, it's yeah, quite funny good. how uh, it's quite funny how we've always been told that movies are oh, that it's just fiction. But really, I think it's more true than than we know. Absolutely, it's 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 done. It's done in an entertaining form, but it's so much closer to the, the truth than people can actually fathom. I mean, if they knew some of the some of the training that these people have, you know, it's it it looks like stunts, but a lot of these people are actually trained to do a lot of the things that they do in real life. They know this stuff because it's part of their programming. It's absolutely incredible the way these people are used. Yes, mm-hmm. and I've, I've been keeping an eye on particularly because um, when I became aware of this, it was Lady Gaga, and so I followed her for a bit. And um, at the same time, I'm quite interested in what's going on politically. And you know, it was like the rise of Obama and the rise of Lady Gaga. So I kind of think that that what's happening to Obama is uh, Lady Gaga is operating parallel to what he does. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? In what? As far as Lady Gaga being moved into a power role? Well, no, like, if she went to have um, a concert somewhere, it, it might be like um, like she was setting it up for the political thing that was going to happen in the same country or whatever. Oh, okay. Are you, are you saying that they're being used as distractions while political things are taking place? Well, if if we mm. look at if we mm. look at the space shows, for example, that they are might be rituals, and that they they carry out a ritual beforehand of a political event or something. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree with that too. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Lady Gaga being involved in rituals because I I had been following her for a while, also like you. And what I found is after a few of her concerts, there was actually one. I believe it was Miami New Year's Eve of last year, um, and she had a concert down in Miami. And a Playboy model was found burned in a dumpster uh, outside of the venue where she was playing. I think that's since then, and we're talking about a year later. That's the third death that I have found connected to her shows so mm-hmm. definitely I think that there's rituals going on I also think that they're being used as distractions when political um, events are taking place and not only that but celebrities are also being moved into political positions uh, Ronald Reagan who was uh, the one of the presidents of the United States he was an actor before he was a president uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was an actor before he became governor so a lot of these guys, you know, again, when you're talking about actors, you're talking about multiple personality disorder, and then you move them into a political position, and boom, they're perfect for it. So a lot of this switcheroo, chess game stuff that's going on, absolutely, and it's happening in front of people's faces, and they have no idea. Do you think we might see George Clooney or Brad Pitt as the American president in the future? <laughs> You know, I, 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 you know what? If people are foolish enough to continue to swoon over this guy, then yes. Um, yes. I mean, anything's, anything's possible. If you get an uproar, you know, if people actually do the work and they find out that Brad Pitt is actually uh, blood connected to Obama, then that's a whole different story. And people will be like, wait a minute, no, no. They'll start to realize that they're all family to begin with. So, I mean... Again, it's you know if people start paying attention and start making a stink, then this the whole house of cards comes down. If people want to sit around and swoon over these guys because the Fight Club is their favorite movie and they love Brad and Angelina and blah 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 and all this other nonsense, then we're going to keep going down the path that we're going down now, and it's we're going to be in big trouble as time goes on if nothing you know if people don't start standing up and speaking up and kicking and screaming about this stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave uh, someone else to for, for someone else to call in as well. And, and I I just wanted to to call in and say hi, ask a couple of questions, and thank you so much for everything you do. You have opened my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I I think I found you about a year ago on YouTube, and since then, you know, it's just um, you know becoming aware of all this. So thank you very much. And what do you suggest to other people? I mean, I I do. I make videos, and you know, I talk about it to people. And and but is there anything else we can do? <laughs> <laughs> 
Honestly, I was thinking about making T-shirts and trying to get people to wear the Hollywood stuff, but I don't know if people will actually be willing to, yeah. to wear some of the stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people watch the videos in secrecy biting their nails as it is, so I don't know if people are going to run around wearing it, but who knows? You know, I think I'm probably just going to keep making videos for a while, and who knows? Who who knows? I mean, things could change in an hour in my world, so who, who knows? <laughs> be honest with you but you know what I think it was really awesome that you called in and you have an awesome accent I didn't expect the, the, the accent so that was pretty cool too and I just think it was really yeah, sweet for you to call in thank you yeah yeah this is London okay. calling you know London awesome. yes yes oh that's awesome alright yes. well I'm going to leave other, other people to call for, for them to call in as well so thank you very much well, well thank you so Gladys I appreciate you calling in. great call All right, then. And v very, okay. very good point. All right, next caller tonight uh, looks like uh, Kathy oh, from California. How are you doing tonight, Kathy? Fine. How are you doing? Good. You brought up a, about uh, Disney. He was actually a 53rd degree Mason and uh, pretty high up in the ranks. And, um, of course, I grew up with Disney and... I can't, you know, it was a total lie what we were told about how he started his business. Anyway, that's another story. Another thing you brought up was about uh, Charlie Sheen. Martin Sheen is a Jesuit. I don't know if you know that. I do he know. His, <laughs> he, he took his name after Archbishop Martin Sheen. And his real name was Estevez. And he yes. is a Jesuit. He is a Jesuit that has infiltrated our system. Uh, Clinton was a Je is a Jesuit. President Johnson was a Jesuit. It's very interesting. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Very. Uh, thanks so much for that information. It's that time, though. If you want to hold on, uh, we can bring you back for a minute after the break. But stay tuned. We will be right back. Truth Brigade Radio. All right. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the check text chat tonight that's over at truthbrigade.com and any questions or comments 402 AFR 2525 Hollywood and MK Ultra Deception with Esoteric Kitten tonight you can find all of her videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash esoteric kitten or go to the big screen deception dot blogspot dot com and all the information Information is put there in one nice, really, 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 really big long blog explaining everything we're talking about tonight and so much more. I can't believe how fast time flies, EK. It's like, oh, we're never going to get to all these questions. Um, but we're going to do our best, and if not, hopefully you'll like to or agree to join us in the future so we can delve a little deeper in this because I think it's just really important and you're right you know a lot of people don't want to see it they don't want to believe it they don't want to swallow it but that doesn't mean we need to stop trying no um kathy is uh still on the line so uh -huh. if you ladies uh -huh. would uh please continue yeah i just had what i mean if you look back at what charlie sheen did about 9 11 he only did it once or twice i mean it was to uh i think go off the who, who he is. I think he's probably a Jesuit along with his dad, to be honest. I don't trust him. Uh, so that, that's my feeling on him. I do know that Martin Sheen is a Jesuit. It's fact. So I thought you'd like to know that information, and uh, we've got a lot of insiders in the truth, as we know. So I think that's another one. Um, you, you know what? I appreciate these remarks because it's funny because I was looking up um, Martin Sheen, or excuse me, Charlie Sheen today because I was like, you know, Emilio Estevez has a different last name than Charlie Sheen. Let me figure out what's going on. And I found that Sheen was simply a stage name and the original name was Estevez. And I started to get to digging with that and I got tangled up in some other things and never went back to it. And it's really ironic, Kathy, that you would call and give me this information because this gives me a whole chunk of information um, to work with in the future. So I really, I really appreciate that. 
And you were saying something about Walt Disney. Could you elaborate on that? Because I didn't quite catch all of that. The phone was breaking up a little bit. Okay, Walt Disney, it was a 53rd, not a 53rd degree mason. Uh, Freeman uh, did a, a, a big, long thing about Walt Disney, and I got to check into Walt Disney more, and he was a 53rd degree, I mean, yeah, 53rd degree mason, so he was really up at the rank, mason. Mm -hmm. So, and I, but um, yeah, uh, uh, Martin Sheen. If you, there's a website out there that tells you how he got his name, and he got it from Archbishop Martin Sheen, who was a Jesuit. Uh, Archbishop, what was the name? Fulton F U L T O N Sheen, okay. Archbishop, and he's a Jesuit of uh, Archbishop. Also in the wow. you might. Also in the 9-11 uh, Silence for Truth, there's um, Bob Bowman, who's a lieutenant colonel. He's also an archbishop, Jesuit. He's uh, associated with the, Associ the Society of Jesus, with the, which is his Jesuit. He's involved in the e ecumenical movement for the uh, Catholic Church movement that's going on. Just uh, more information out there about another insider. So awesome! Thank you for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do some digging on the Pope yeah. Sheen Archbishop and post that up on a couple of different sites and let people chew on that for a while because that's a surprise to me and that's it's just more information for people to get their hands on. So I really appreciate that, Kathy. You're welcome. And what's interesting about uh, Bob Bowman? He even signed up on Pilots for Truth 9/11 as an Archbishop, and I'm surprised that they're not up on it or maybe they you know they know he's an insider and playing the game with him so I don't know interesting I'm just jotting all this down as you're talking it's very yeah. very interesting I'm a late sure. coming to the truth move but I didn't find out about anything until October of last year and then um, a lot of research and I was Catholic recently and I know the Catholic religion is definitely behind the Pope is behind all the governments of the world what's going on um, it's really scary. I, uh, we're headed back to the Roman Empire, and they were known to be a bloody outfit. Yeah, I agree. They are. It's it's funny because on paper, there is a document that basically says that the Vatican owns uh, the entire globe until Jesus returns. The Vatican is mm -hmm. the religious center. Um, the United States is the war center, and I believe it's London, I could be incorrect, maybe maybe Great Britain, one of the two, um, is the financial uh, corporation. Mm -hmm. so, you know, they're all corporations, and so, um, yeah, so we're all incorporated. Uh, we think that we're countries, and we're not. We're, we're corporations, and that's a whole different bag of worms that you can sit there and open and chit chat about all day, but... Um, but it does actually, it, it does go right back to the Pope and the, the Roman Empire. Absolutely, you're correct about that. Uh, this is the one dangerous guy. The white one's just the puppet. Um, and an uh, interesting thing, too, is um, I think that, you know, the, the Vatican's not stupid, so they, they use to sort of have the biggest guns, and then we're one of them, and Russia's the other one, and I think they're going to play us against the other. And uh, it's going to be a uh, bloody mess when they get busy. But, uh, I agree with that, too. If we allow it, yeah. if we the people yeah. allow it to happen, if we continue to blindly support them, then yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if we can stop them at this point. You know, I think, I think we've lost it. When you read the Bible and, you know, it's prophesied. I don't know if we can slow them down or I don't know. Well, you know what? The, the thing is, non-compliance. Okay, if look at if everyone decides tomorrow to stop paying their mortgages, okay, and if everyone decides, you know what, we're not going to enforce this, then who's going to be the guy to come and kick you out of your house? No one. You know why? Because no one is complying. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? If everyone refuses and says, you know, we're not going to use this this BS money that we're getting from the treasuries that we're actually renting, um, and we're yeah. just not going to use it anymore, who is going to come and audit you? No one. You know why? Because <laughs> no one's going to work anymore. So <laughs> the, the answer is so easy. It's such a simple solution, really. It really um, is. 
Yeah, so it's time to just do something about it and put put our money where our mouth is or, yeah. or lack or do there, nothing. Right? Do absolutely nothing. Doing nothing and non compliance is what's gonna get the whole thing to fall apart. Because who's going to enforce their their orders? No one. Who's gonna pick up the machine guns and go across to and fight? No one. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? It's well, very it's good. All, it's all willing. You're, you're a willing participant. If you use your free will to participate in these orders that are handed down, then that makes you just as guilty as the people who are ordering you in the first place. You are a willing participant in everything that you do, and you need to be in control of where you put your will, and it really is that simple. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. <laughs> Kathy, I want to thank you for your call. We're kind of running out of time here, but excellent call. Really good points. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. All thank right. You go. Good night. That was awesome. New information for you, E.K. Absolutely. You should see what my little, my little scribbles are all over my paper. I've got it. I've got it all. I just have to find and post it. Awesome. That's beautiful. And once again, bigscreendeception.blogspot.com is the website. And I can't believe how little time we have left. But let's kind of, um, let me ask you, well, uh, a question keeps coming up in the chat. What is this? Um, something about Lady Gaga and a meat dress? Yeah. Is that like for real? Like a dress really made out of meat? Yeah, she wore I think it's I think it was the Grammys ceremony this year, um, and I just looked at it and I was like, you know, as far as I'm concerned to me it just looks like she's dead meat. You know, it's just pretty simple, pretty basic. It could have a whole different meaning to it, but to me for her to be walking around in dead animals, to me that's just it's simply expressing being dead meat. Mm, Unless wow. someone has something I mean, cooler than I do. <laughs> You know? I, I didn't even know who this thing was, and I, I'm, I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but I was really kind of bummed. I went to go show my friends some of one of my favorite band, uh, Poker Face, um, out of Pennsylvania. I wanted to go show them some videos, and um, anyway, so I went into YouTube and put Poker Face, and this thing came up all over the place. What is uh -huh. that? And, you know, so of course we can't find Poker Face of PokerFace.com, um, their videos anymore, because this thing that just lady i mean where does that name come from i i just when i think of lady i don't really think of what i saw in um i, I don't even think i watched a whole video but it was pretty sick and i, I definitely didn't hear anything about a, a dress made out of meat yeah this you know <laughs> There's so much stuff online about her. I really haven't done too much on her. I did use her performance, I think, earlier this year uh, for one of the videos when she did the, the Fame Factory performance with the mind control music, and then she came out with Elton John, and this was right after the, earth, the earthquake in Haiti. And it's funny because when she came out with Elton John, they came out playing this double-sided piano doing a duet. And they had limbs, okay, these, these mannequin limbs coming mm -hmm. out of the top of the piano covered in ashes. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, covered in ashes. And this is, again, this is right after the Haiti earthquake. Not only that, but the beginning of her performance, I think it was Grammy, the Grammy 2009, 2010, I can't quite remember. You have to go and look it up. But she came out in this green uh, outfit, and the outfit itself was a Baphomet face, okay? If you can actually get a hold of this clip and look at this, it's actually in my, um, I have a celebrity folder on my Facebook, so you can go in and take a look mm -hmm. at it. It's MK Lady Gaga. I've got some interesting shots in there, but one of them is her wearing this, green Baphomet face outfit. Uh, she's also got a lot of rope burns on her, a lot of um, yeah, bruises. Yeah, I saw bruises. Those in your other album of all the, um, you know, signs of abuse. I don't know how many stars you have in there, but quite a few. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are pretty banged up, you know, pop lips, black eyes, you know, bruises on their knees, stun gun marks on the back of the neck. I mean, uh, I think one of the pictures is um, Ben Stefani's kid had a black eye. You know, and it's like these babies are showing up with signs of abuse. How can you sit here and say that it's not happening when you've got toddlers showing up with black eyes, okay? Yeah. Because they're going through the same programming that the parents went through because it's perfectly, it's, it's part of their programming. 
mm-hmm. you know. So and it just continues to go down down the family line. And Gaga, I mean, she's just. I think she's pretty far gone. I really do. Um, and I think it's obvious looking at her and looking at the material that she puts out or that her producers have her put out. Even the Ale- the Alejandro video that she did, there's a there's a scene where the guy picks her up and he pops his thumb up her panties. And, he, and this is on the video right in front of people who are watching this video, you know. So it's, it's just turn the TV off, people. You know, it's really that, that simple. What you on her arm? You know what? I don't know. Um, I can't read whatever language it's in. You, you need someone to um, to decode it. It may be in Sanskrit. Sanskrit. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. I, I Wow. We just had a guest on the show, a Ph.D. Uh, Harvard in Sanskrit. I think oh. I'm going to send that to him. <laughs> yeah, send it over. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll post a Gaga um the um, Gaga album um, on your uh, on your chat board here, so people can see it if they're listening, and they they've got to be logged into their Facebook to take a look at it. But my yeah, my page is fully open, one by one. So unfortunately, you have to be in the text chat to see it over at truthbrigade.com. But really, I mean, go to facebook.com esoteric kitten deception and take a look at these albums it's really just mind-boggling it's it's amazing really I'm kind of speechless looking at this and just thinking what the heck is going on and why the heck are we falling for it but yeah it is that time so we're going to be right back after this short break stay tuned Truth Brigade Radio Thanks so much for joining us here tonight, Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. This is the last segment. E.K., I can't believe how quick this went. Uh, let me ask you this. Can you tell us you're going to come back? Because I have this whole list of questions here and like six minutes left. And <laughs> Of course, absolutely. I will definitely right. come back. Okay, of course. so then I don't have to worry about trying to fit them all in six minutes. <laughs> okay. I know, it's just it did go by quickly. I'm surprised. I thought we would have more time, but I guess time flies when you tell the truth. Just barely scratched the surface, and there's so much. But I'm going to um, check the calendar and try to get you on as soon as humanly possible uh, to follow this up. But okay, goodness. Now, which question do I want to go with? <laughs> We're going to leave you hanging, guys. Sorry. Um, but one of them um, has to do with the association between uh, Madonna. And Britney Spears, and I guess uh, Madonna's pretty heavily into Kabbalah, and Britney was kind of maybe working with her for a while, and then uh, things went a little haywire. Can you shed some insight on that? I think Madonna. Um, I think Madonna's been involved in this stuff for a long time, and when it comes down to uh, the uh, occult portion of it, um, I think that she is definitely uh, higher up there um, with. I want to say she she's she's along the lines of a sorceress. That's what I think. Um, just by watching her, examining her, looking at the things that she's done, looking at the way that she handles Brittany. Um, she was actually, there's a scene in Brittany's um, documentary that she did uh, where she comes into the room and Brittany looks, her face looks uncomfortable, and then she sits down next to Brittany and she takes her hand and she's talking about something lighting or something happening on her stage, and she does this circular hand gesture on Brittany and Brittany's facial expression changes and her eyes sort of roll to the side, um, and to me that that was a trigger. And I saw that when that actually took place, and I'm like, you know what? Something's, something's wrong, something's going on. You can actually find that clip online somewhere. I don't know where it is. You have to Google it. Um, I think that she's heavily involved in, um, I don't know if you want to call it witchcraft or sorcery, because I know that they're all different, but I definitely believe that she is involved in some ritual heavy-duty stuff. I think that she's exposed Britney Spears to quite a bit. Um, I think she has... Um, uh, deep knowledge of Britney's altars, and I think that she's manipulated them. I think that she's used them. I think that she's taken advantage of Britney. I think that she is guilty of a lot of different things, um, and I think that she was her primary handler for, for, for some time when it came down to, um, to being involved in the entertainment world, especially after that ritual kiss 
on stage um, and then putting the top hat on Britney and sort of passing the buck. So um, that is my take on Madonna. I also mm-hmm. believe that Madonna is is still a slave um, of, of all of the pictures that I found of abused celebrities I have found Madonna to be um, the most highly abused um, celebrity she's got the most black eyes the most bruises and battered I mean when it comes even more than Lady Gaga this woman is getting tossed around so there's a lot that's going on with Madonna not only that but Madonna's daughter, Lourdes, is going through programming. Um, you'll see her daughter in the Pinocchio clothing, and you know, which is the the, the puppeteering, or the the puppet master uh, type programming. Um, and so Madonna's involved in a lot. And I mean, if I was in Hollywood, I, she would be the one that I would try to dodge the most because I think that she's just one of the worst ones out there. Wow. Okay, yeah. um, shoot, two minutes left, and uh, the blog site, once again, is bigscreendeception.blogspot.com, and you have a ton of videos about celebrities talking about their childhood abuse, yeah. and um, I mean, uh, we don't have time to go through them all, but let me yeah. ask you about uh, Howard Stern. You know, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with that guy. I've always suspected something was going on. I know that Robin was um, sexually abused as a child, and Howard Stern kind of just comes out and says, yeah, you know, someone touched me as a child, too. So, you know, these stories of celebrities coming out and saying they're molested, they don't surprise me at all. They really don't. Um, His admission was not as um, devastating as some of the other ones on the blog, but it is... (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely out there. He didn't go too far with it, but I'm sure if we do some digging, we'll find more information on Howard Stern, that's for sure. Okay, and of course we know about Roseanne Barr, and then even (laughs) Marilyn Manson, uh, Tyler Perry, Corey Haim, and Corey Feldman, uh, Billy Corgan, Axl Rose, I... I mean, the list is just endless. Can can we name one star who hasn't been abused? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I haven't, um, to be honest with you, I haven't been able to find one yet. Um, so I'm still looking. I don't know too much about Randy Quaid. I haven't look in, looked into him too deeply, but I know he and his brother are both in Hollywood. So I'm sure that there's something going on with those two as well. I just haven't been able to dig it up. Uh, just yet, but um, we will see. Now, is there anything going on with Demi Lovato? I've kind of heard she's kind uh, of uh, conservative, and uh, some people believe that she hasn't been uh, exposed to the the dark side. <laughs> Demi Lovato is a cutter. Okay, um, I, again, if you look into my uh, face pictures, you'll see that she's got slice marks. She's had slice marks for quite some time now. She's a Disney girl, and she just got thrown into rehab. Um, so that should this, this, that should tell you something. The second they go into rehab is, is I mean, obviously you want to do some digging before then, but when they end up in rehab, that's when you want to start looking. Um, Demi Lovato has yeah. always been someone... Programming, right? <laughs> yeah... Okay, EK, I am so sorry. We are so out of time. I thank you so much for sharing your time and wisdom with us here tonight. Looking forward to having you back as soon as humanly possible. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And uh, stay tuned for Freeman uh, up next. And he is here live Tuesday, Thursday evenings. Of course, all the great shows coming up this weekend. Uh, but we will see you uh, Monday night. Have Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Be blessed, and uh, we'll see you same time, same place. Truth Brigade Radio.